so I wanted to do another little texture painting video, right? Because we kind of ran into some of those issues <laughs> um, with computers. I actually swapped to a different computer. Um, we should be really ready to rock next week. Um, already got stuff set up and tested and it's working so much better. Um, basically took one of the um, student computers in the far corner, one of the new ones, because <laughs> um, something's just going off my, my old computer. Got a little busted up in class. Um, so what I want to do is just want to do go over some basic painting with you right here. It's been about 10, 15 minutes doing that for you guys. Um, get this stuff uploaded for you guys today. <clears throat> um, that way, if you're kind of wanting to play with it speaking, you got the option. Um, if not, when you come in, there will already be some great videos to watch on Monday. All right. Um, so in this case, you'll notice that we've kind of already got our distortion grid on here, right? Uh, so remember, one of the things that you could always do is you could always quickly just go to, you know, shading, right? And you can see that there is that texture already plugged in here, right? That's kind of what that text tool thing was doing. So it's pretty easy just to kind of grab it, right? Grab whatever node you want to work with. Um, that's what shading menu does, get your node network. You just hit delete and it takes it off, right? So it's pretty easy just to kind of drop in there and to do that. Um, and now we're back to this one right here. Uh, now in this case, I'm gonna go four for object mode, right? So we're back to kind of object level and I'm in the texture paint um, uh, workspace, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the uh, uh, kind of um, red sphere down here, right? So I'm gonna click on that red sphere and we've got all these options here. And I'm of course working in 2.91 at home. So I've got a mission strength now available in the uh, principled uh, BSD, BSDF, which is great. Um, it's gonna make our, doing our glows even easier. Not terribly hard before at all, but you know, it takes a couple steps out of it. Uh, but remember uh, these little kind of balls in the front, um, and some of you guys remember why you had these little checkerboards going on the right side. It's the same thing, right? Just different like icons, right? Um, so base color is what we're going to start with. We're going to give ourselves a quick color pass, and then we're going to do a bit of a metal pass for kind of for the legs, right? Um, so let's do a base color. So click on that. And remember, you can go right to image texture, right? And there's our image texture. In this case, I'm going to go new. And I'm going to call this um, table color. Right. Oop. And I don't want it to be 1024. I want it to be, um, and if your computer can handle it, go 4096. I'm just going to go 2048. Um, mine can totally handle 4096 quite easily, but um, I figure default for you guys might be 2048 better just because, you know, if you're working on your, one of your school devices, um, it's good to kind of just have a default that you can look back in the videos for. This should work fine to give you enough resolution if you look reasonably good, um, while not being a resolution so high that it stresses your, the, um, your performance out on your machine. Uh, so I'm gonna hit okay, there we go. And now we have a texture on here. You see it's fully plugged in here. So the nice thing is you can go into the shading menu and do all that stuff, but you can also just do it right from here, right? Uh, now in this case, I do wanna take the opportunity to um, uh, fill in some color here, right? Uh, so I'm gonna click back up here, right? Because at the very top is our toolbox, right? Really, these are this whole section is really kind of all of our different properties we can get. Some of it's our rendering properties and uh, stuff like that. Some of it's our uh, modifier properties, material properties, um, and object properties. But we also have tool properties up here. So this is gonna be whatever tool we're in. So in this case, you know, um, I wanna paint. Now in this case, it's an object mode, right? So if I click on this, you'll remember there are all your modes right here, but since we're using industry compatible, we also have a bunch of really awesome, great quick keys for it. So eight is actually your quick key for paint. And that sets you into paint mode. And so now you'll see with our tool settings up, our basic default paint brush is there, and here's our paint tools. Now in this case, I wanna go to fill bucket, right? So there's fill bucket, and I'm gonna go uh, down here to kind of um, pick on a color. So we'll just kind of uh, pick color, just to give it kind of a default good fill, uh, maybe something a little bit kind of in the brown range. Something like that should probably work okay. And that was kind of the gradient. So if you don't want gradient, but you want like color, you can do that here as well. Um, kind of turn that up to more of a white, brown, there we go. And then of course, with fill bucket on, we can either go and fill it right here, or if we want to really fill the whole image, because that would just fill the geometry but if you want to fill the whole image, just make sure paint's on here. And then you should just be able to click kind of anywhere on the image and it floods the whole image, right? So fill bucket gives you the ability just to flood or fill whatever you're working on, right? Now, if you want to see more of your viewport, you just kind of grab here and minimize this bit more, right? Um, just to see more of this. 
Um, and that gets us kind of a good starting point for this, right? Uh, now at this point, we can go back to our paintbrush tools. Now, keep in mind that at home I have B Painter. So if I click on this little V, um, you can see that I can go to B Painter right here. And this gives you a ton of other options, right? You can have a full layer system. You can have um, a brush uh, stuff that you can browse for. There's even a bunch of br uh, br uh, brush piece, uh, presets. Uh, so I definitely recommend B Painter because um, it really allows you to have a proper layer system. Um, and one that even though you don't have true multi-channel painting, um, the way you can link and use layers from different channels with each other, you basically can mimic multi-channel painting uh, quite easily and quite effectively. Um, B Painter is quite an excellent add-on. Um, there's a couple of different ones, but I found overall in terms of uh, overall robustness and user friendliness, B Painter is pretty awesome. It is not free though, um, but uh, kind of cool. Uh, so just figured to remind you guys, hey, that's there. It's always available. Gives you some neat stuff um, that you might like. Um, I'm going to kind of uh, minimize that down because uh, I'm trying to make this vanilla for you guys because you guys aren't necessarily going to have B-Painter. And that's probably the biggest thing about Default Blender is this actual core painting tools are excellent. Uh, and it's just, it needs a proper uh, layer, uh, multi-channel interface. And to really get that in any uh, pretty excellent fashion, you're generally going to need um, something like B-Painter. Um, I also want to set to Eevee, right? I really want to make sure to be using Eevee right here. Um, uh, if you need to, you can go right here to make sure your other EV settings are on. I'll turn on Bloom in a minute. Um, we'll go back to that. Um, you can always go here uh, to turn your scene lights off or on. Um, and you'll notice you have kind of a darker area and a lighter area. Uh, by default, that's what the way Blender was doing it before, but 2.91 actually added this cool new option where you can actually, uh, you'll see right here, it says make the HDR rotation fixed and not follow the camera. Um, so basically, if you uncheck this, you'll now see that your lighting will be bright no matter what your view is, um, which is kind of neat, right? So um, I've uh, you can have that on for a while and then you see how it's still gonna stay dark down there, but um, you can easily uncheck that and then your lighting's always nice on the model um, from the view panel, and that's, that's pretty cool actually. Uh, and that is a 2.91 feature, right? It's kind of, there's a couple of neat things in Blender 2.91 I wanted you guys to have, that's why I was kind of telling you guys, hey, upgrade, right? And remember, this is just your little kind of V going down. Um, it gives you your options for these. And this one's your kind of EV material preview one. Um, this will actually do your full render, um, which um, can do a full render with EV or uh, Cycles. Cycles is the better option. It's a bit more robust than EV, even though EV is awesome. EV is meant more for real time, uh, where Cycles is meant for uh, more for your final renders. Um, so kind of neat. And what we can easily do if we wanted to, and this is one of the things we kind of showed off a little bit the other day, is I might even want to kind of give myself different base colors, right? I feel like this table might not need much in the way of um, texture texturing, right? And we may just want to go some colors and some metals and maybe do a fabric here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go to three for face mode and I'm going to select a face on the tabletop. I'm going to do select linked, right? Now for me, I've set it to space bar. Uh, by default though, remember it is right bracket, right? Remember there's a, qu a quiz for that, right bracket. Uh, I just use it all the time and spacebar is a great key that um, uh, I, I, you know, since I have my tweak tool on my mouse, I figured out oh, on my, uh, one of my uh, fourth or fifth mouse button, spacebar is a great one. Um, and remember what you could do is you could do that and then hit eight. Remember three is just face mode, eight for texture. And one of the cool things you'll see is that you could do this. See right here by texture paint and view, there's this little kind of thing that really looks like face selection mode. Click on that, and when it does, it sets it so that you can only paint or fill on the selected polygons. So I go back to Fill Bucket, and in this case, I'm gonna maybe set this to kind of a, a more uh, kind of uh, darker brown, right? There we go. I'm just gonna click here to fill that in, and there we go. Now, of course, I can hit three to go back to face mode, and if I want, then I can go here and select this one, right? Select link for that one, then hit eight, and then I can go pick something that's maybe more of kind of a neutral grayish color. And then we could flood paint that. And then we could turn this off and we see we have these different flood painted colors. You can even see it in the editor here. It's one of the things I just love. It's so cool and so easy to use in Blender, right? That's stock. You don't have to have B Painter for that, right? In fact, B Painter doesn't really give you different painting tools. It just gives you layers. Um, and technically Blender could do that. It's just a, a mess to set up through the shader network. And, and B Painter kind of does all that for you in a nice interface. Um, but Blender's actual painting tools are excellent um, stock. And it's just, they don't really have a, an excellent stock layer system 
um, for utilizing it as well as you could. And that's where something like BPainter as an add-on is um, pretty cool. Um, so kind of a neat way to kind of get ourselves uh, some flood painted stuff if we want to. There we go. Uh, and in this case, um, I might want to make a different kind of material. Also remember you have file uh, external data and you can have it automatically pack, right? So if you go to file ex export external data, you can automatically pack. So that when I save this, this texture is saved with the Blender file. So all you have to do is grab that table Blender file, move it with you and the texture will be in there. Really, really cool feature of Blender. Uh, now in this case, uh, like I said, I'm gonna keep these simple colors uh, and stuff like that. Uh, but what I wanna do is I also wanna kind of create a, um, a different map type, right? I don't mind having a bit of uh, kind of shininess on this for the table. Um, I don't wanna paint tons of map types for it, right? We're not gonna try to be exhaustive of all texturing and map types we can do, but I did wanna get us some more map types so we haven't painted with this much. And so in this case, what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a different uh, material type. So I'm gonna to go to um, our red sphere and I'm gonna to go to metallic this time, right? Metallic. Um, although we don't necessarily have to do that. If we, if we did wanna maybe have this be metallic um, and this not be, one of the things we could always try to do is just control it through roughness, right? Because remember, one of the things we could do is we could just actually just left click drag in here in the slider to turn this up and you see it becomes kind of pretty uh, metallic there already. And in fact, if you turn your roughness down, you'll see how it looks even more and more metalish, right? So remember, just by uh, left click dragging on these areas, you can actually control these material properties. And so metallic makes it look more and more metallic, but roughness kind of really controls the reflectivity. So even if you turn metallic down, you'll still get some reflection, even with a low roughness, uh, it's just that it doesn't quite have that same kind of uh, tinting that metallic does. So metallic does kind of give you a bit of a, a different tint to it. It, it generally tries to uh, tint the color, uh, specular color to the actual color of the um, uh, color texture itself. So in this case, that's cool for the legs, right? We kind of wanted those to be metallic, but I don't really want them to be um, that for say um, the tabletop, right? So instead of um, maybe painting a metal map, which you could do, we can actually paint a roughness map, right? So remember this little kind of uh, red sphere, um, you could just slide the controls up here so that you don't have to always have these turned up and down. Specularity in itself is kind of its own shininess control that's not related to reflection. So you could always kind of adjust that a little bit as well. But I'm gonna 